What's up you guys, it's Levi here. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Education Channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about malware on mobile devices, specifically on iOS devices, um, iPhones and iPad malware. And there's two reasons I wanna talk about malware on these devices. The number one reason is the attitude where people are saying, well Levi, Apple devices can't get malware, they can't be hacked, they are invincible. You know, you hear that all the time where Apple devices can't be hacked. It more it mostly goes with Macs, but it also translates up to the iPads and the iPhones as well. Um, and part of the reason why was back in the day, Apple did a very good job of advertising that their Mac devices didn't get hacked. And at that time, that, that was likely true. They did not have very many viruses and things like that. Uh, but over time, their market share has grown and their likelihood of getting hacked is greater than it ever has been because there's a lot of people that have Macs and there's a lot of incentive for hackers to be able to attack those devices. Um, and the same thing goes for the iOS devices that iPhones and the iPads, the market share is so high, there's a lot of incentives to go after that. Apple makes it extremely difficult to do that, but as I'm gonna be talking about here soon, um, there are cases where people can break through the Apple infrastructure. No device is unbreakable. Anything can be hacked. It doesn't matter whether it's Apple, Windows, anything like Android, anything. Uh, if somebody wants to hack it, they're gonna find a way to get into it if they have enough time and they have enough motivation. So the number two point that I wanna bring up is an incident that I saw an article from um, this week on October 25th of 2019 from wired.com and also from digitaltrends.com that I'll be talking about where 17 apps on the Apple iOS store um, were infected with malware. So I'll be talking about that, that case so you guys can learn all about what happened there. And then at the end, I'll most importantly talk about what you guys can learn from that case and what you guys can do to help protect yourself when installing apps on your phone uh, to make sure that you're not getting malware on your phone or to really reduce your risk of getting malware on your phone. Um, this is more for iOS users, but if you are an Android user, pay attention because you can learn a lot from this video because a lot of the things that I'm gonna talk about in this video can apply to Android itself. I hope you guys learn a lot from this content. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so there were 17 apps on the Apple iOS store that um, were developed by App Aspect Technologies. Um, they were used invasive measures to bypass Apple's defenses in the iOS app store. Um, so normally Apple has it set up so they have like a vetting process for any apps that are put in the app store and this application was able to bypass that vetting process. Um, as you can see on the screen here, some of the apps impacted RTO vehicle information, um, EMI calculator and loan planner, file manager, smart GPS speedometer, um, a daily fitness app, an FM radio pro app, my train info, a restaurant finder app, dual accounts pro app, video editor and a smart video compressor. Those are just kind of some examples of applications that were impacted. Um, Apple did end up taking those off the app store. <laughs> um, if you had any of these apps yourself, go ahead and post a comment down below. Um, tell me, tell us your experience with those apps. Did you notice any issues with your phone while those were on there? Um, and then also comment on what the heck some of these things are because like Ramadan Times 19, 2019 Pro, I have no idea what that is. If you know what it is, post a comment down below. I'd love to hear what it is and, and what, what you used it for if you had it. So those are the 17 apps that were impacted. The interesting thing about these apps is they, vet, they bypass the Apple vetting process because they were able to detect whether a security researcher was looking at them. And if they determined that a security researcher was looking at them, they acted normally. They didn't do the malware type thing that they do, um, which was to 
open a bunch of ads up in the background and, and do clicks on them um, to get the person that hijacked those applications money off the ad revenue. And fortunately in this situation, the only harm that was caused to anybody that downloaded the apps was it drained their battery because those ads were running in the background. And then there was extra data being used that could have costed more money uh, for data usage for users, but users didn't have to worry about their phones being hijacked and having all of their stuff stolen off of it and basically allowing attackers to do whatever the F they want on the phone. So that's good about this situation. This is an extremely, extremely low risk case. It's just affecting battery and data usage. So that's a good thing. The bad thing is the fact that these applications got through the app store and were able to do this type of stuff, it just shows that something more rogue could get in and get through there and take advantage of a vulnerability or something and be able to do whatever the F they want to your device. So while these cases aren't super bad, I wanted to point them out to you guys because it could be a lot worse. It goes to show that Apple devices are not invincible. Things can get through. Apple is not perfect at detecting all these things. So you guys have to be extra careful what you're downloading. Apple devices are not invincible. So the, the software development company claimed that they, they didn't know about the malware in their application, which is, pro which is probably true. Um, they probably took third-party code from an, another developer and use that in their application and that third party code was infected and they didn't know about it until somebody reported it to them. So now we're down to the most important part. What can you guys learn from this? Well, there's four things that you guys need to know when you're installing applications on your mobile devices. The first thing that you guys should think about when you're installing apps on your mobile device is be careful what you install on your mobile device, the more things that you install on your mobile device, the more likely you are to get hit with malware on your mobile device. So be extra careful, be specific and intentional about what you install on your mobile device. Number two, you wanna make sure that you're doing your research before you ever install an app on a mobile device. You wanna make sure that you're doing a Google search on that app. You wanna make sure that you're doing a Google search on that developer. Look up reviews and see what people are saying. See if people are having problems with that app, if they're getting screwed over by the organization, things like that. And this is especially key if it's an app or an organization that you never heard of before and the functionality of it seems too good to be true or it just seems kind of weird. The number three thing that you want to do when you're looking at installing a mobile application is asking yourself the risks of installing that application and what's in it for the developer. So the first thing on this, what type of risks are you gonna take by installing this application? What type of personal information are you getting out that could potentially be used against you? Um, and then on the what's in it for the developer part, uh, if the application is free, why is it free? Uh, you know, there's no such thing as a free launch, so the developer's obviously getting something out of it. Um, you should figure out what that is because you don't want them selling data about you, your activities, things like that, that could potentially look bad on you or that you don't want out there. Finally, the number four thing, be careful with trending apps. You see it, you see it quite a bit. There's this big app that comes out in the news that so amazing, like the Face app app that came out back earlier this year. Um, it does all these cool things. It, it makes your face turn into something that's amazing. It ages you, things like that. Uh, but then you find out that the developer was out of Russia and there was controversy that um, Russia was potentially using that to gather information about US citizens for facial recognition. While there's nothing ever proved on that, that's just something to think about when you're installing these viral apps. Um, you want to make sure that you're following the steps that I talked about before, doing your research, asking yourself the risk, and being careful about installing those applications. Just because it's viral and everybody else is doing it doesn't mean those apps are safe. You have to be conscious about the risks and things like that, installing those apps. If you want to know more about the Face app situation that I'm talking about, I'll put a card up above. I did a video on that so you guys can learn more about the situation. Um, and it all, it'll also teach you more 
advice on mobile security on top of this video that I'm doing now. Um, so those are the four ways that you can help protect yourselves. Um, I really wanted to get this video out there for you guys so that you guys know that it doesn't matter that you're using an Apple device, that you're using iOS, you can still get malware, you can still get hacked. You gotta take precaution um, when you're doing things on your device, when you're installing apps. Follow these steps when you're installing apps and you'll really, really reduce your risk at getting malware and getting hacked on your device by installing apps. I hope you guys learned a lot from this. If you like this content, hit that like button, hit those subscribe buttons, hit that notification bell to get this content promoted up in the YouTube algorithm to help people more like you protect themselves from these terrible cybersecurity things. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Thank you for watching guys and have a great day.